हेलो लर्नर्स वेलकम टू एन सीनियर सेकेंडरी बायोलॉजी प्रोग्राम माई सेल्फ नेहा मदान टूडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द टॉपिक न्यूट्रिशन एंड हेल्थ इन मच डिटेल बिफोर मूविंग ऑन टू द एक्चुअल कॉन्टेंट्स ऑफ द टॉपिक लेट एस सी द मेजर कॉन्सेप्ट विच वी हैव टू कवर इन दिस टॉपिक देर आर थ्री मेजर कॉन्सेप्ट इन विच दिस चैप्टर हैज बीन डिवाइडेड द फर्स्ट कॉन्सेप्ट इज फूड न्यूट्रिशन एंड डिजीज In the subtopic of a food we have to cover the following headings that is meaning of the food its classification on the basis of the nutrients present in it and the functional classification that is the biological functions which food performs in our body food whenever anyone asks us what are the basic needs of our life without which life is not possible we often say roti kapda and makan that is food clothing and shelter now the question arises why the food is a basic necessity of a life there are three questions which comes in the mind what powers the food have why we can't live without food what does the food contains in order to find out the answer to the following questions let us see further food food is a basic necessity of a life it can be defined as any nutritive material of a plant or animal origin which when taken into the human body will meet the requirement for growth repair development and maintenance food is what nourishes the body it removes our hunger it give us the satisfaction and it renews our strength food is any substance which performs the following functions in our body the first very basic function is that it provides us energy for the life processes which take place in our body food also help us in building up the new cells which are required for the maintenance of the body it also repairs the tissues which get damaged during the life processes it also aids in the production of useful body compounds so i hope you are seeing how much useful food is in our life classification of a food food has been divided into the two basic categories on the basis of the nutrients present in the food and on the basis of biological processes biological functions which it performs in our body nutrients friends whenever you purchase any food item from the market and if we look at the packet of the food item at back side of that packet the detail of the nutrients present in the food are given such as this food item contains this much amount of energy this food item contains this much amount of carbohydrate proteins minerals vitamins etc so what all are these these are the nutrients which are found in the food that keeps our body functioning nutrients are divided into the two major categories that is macronutrients and micronutrients macronutrients as the name suggests these are the nutrients which are required in a large amount large quantity in our body and micronutrients as the name suggests these are the nutrients which are required in a small quantities in our body nutrients can be defined as any chemical components of the food which when taken performs the functions related to the body growth its ability to work grow develop and maintain good health nutrients are basically carbohydrates fats proteins vitamins minerals water and roughage is also important nutrient in our diet there are basically seven essential nutrients which are found in any food item Number one is carbohydrates, proteins, and fat. As we can see on the slide, that these are the major, that is the macronutrients. Vitamins, minerals, they form the category of micronutrients, and then there is a roughage. Now we come to the biological classification of the food. That is the classification of the food on the basis of functions which it performs in our body. In this, the food is divided into the three categories. that is energy providing foods body building foods and protective or regulatory foods energy giving foods these include carbohydrates and fat 
and as the name suggests their basic purpose is to provide the energy to the body on the biological oxidation examples are cereals sugars fat jaggery groundnut coconut etc the second category of a food is a body building foods body building foods these are rich in the protein and their function is in the formation of new tissues as we have discussed that cells get damaged so for the formation of the new tissues we need proteins in our diet examples legumes milk egg meat pulses nuts and oil seeds another category of the food is protective or regulatory foods this include vitamins minerals water and roughage the basic purpose of this category of the food is to protect our body from the different infections and regulate the internal metabolism in the body examples are fruit green leafy vegetables amla watermelon orange and citrus fruits let us see the three food groups in this table the first table tell us about the energy providing food and the major nutrients of energy providing foods are carbohydrates and fats and what are the food sources from which we can get this energy providing foods these are cereals rice wheat maize sugar fats oils ghee and jaggery these all are the energy providing foods in our diet another category of the food group is body building foods and the major nutrients of this body building foods are proteins and from where we can get the proteins in our diet we can get the protein from the milk legumes egg white meat chicken mutton fish the next category of the food group is protective food the protective food the major nutrients from which we get the protective food are minerals and vitamins and food sources are green leafy vegetables roughage such as fruits beans amla guava and all the fruits and vegetables now in the uh, till this slide we have covered what is food and what are the classification of the food now move on to the next sub concept that is nutrition learners what is nutrition nutrition is directly related to food intake and changes which it undergoes whenever we take the food it undergoes numbers of the chemical reactions and result into the certain products and processes which comes under the science of nutrition nutrition is both a science and a process let us see how nutrition is a science in itself nutrition is a science that studies the chemical reactions which are involved Uh, when the food is taken into inside the body a number of the reactions which uh, take place when food goes inside the body uh, depending upon the type of the food which we have taken depending upon our age factor and depending upon our health condition whether we are suffering from any disease or not nutrition is a process as we can see the nutrition is a process because it involves the multiple steps such as ingestion of the food digestion of the food absorption of the food utilization of the food for the well being of the living organism so learners nutrition is both a science and a process and it involves multiple processes through which the food undergoes nutrition so what we can say in the simple terms nutrition is a process by which living organism utilizes the food for its maintenance of life for growth for the normal function of every organ and the tissue but for the nutrition what we need from where the nutrition will come to us nutrition depends on the nutrients present in the food so let us see what are the major nutrients which are present in our food number one nutrient is carbohydrates these are the compounds which are made up of carbon hydrogen and oxygen they releases the energy on biological oxidation with the help of cellular enzymes 1 g of a carbohydrate gives 18 kilocalories of energy on complete biological oxidation 
डू यू नो डाय कार्बोहाइड्रेट इन डाइट प्रोवाइड सिक्सटी टू एट्टी परसेंट सोर्स ऑफ आवर एनर्जी दे आर द मेजर सोर्स ऑफ एनर्जी इन आर डाइट कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स हैव बीन डिवाइडिंग इनटू टू मेजर कैटेगरीज डेट इज शुगर्स एंड स्टार्चेस शुगर्स आर फर्दर डिवाइडिंग एज मोनोसेक्राइड्स एंड डाइसेक्राइड्स स्टार्चेस आर डिवाइडिंग एज सेलूबल वराइटीज एंड इन सेलूबल वराइटीज मोनोसेक्राइड्स इंक्लूड ग्लूकोज एंड फ्रक्टोज डाइसेक्राइड्स इंक्लूड सुक्रोज माल्टोज एंड लेक्टोज In the starches, we have soluble variety that is a cell, uh, that is a starch, dextrin, and cremel, and insoluble variety which includes cellulose, hemicellulose. Now let us start with the sugars. In the sugar, we have you can see in the table we have the two categories that is monosaccharides and disaccharides. Monosaccharides are made up of a single carbon carbohydrate chain. and the sim uh, two types of the monosaccharides are the glucose and fructose glucose is the simplest sugar which can be found in honey molasses and the fruits like grapes fructose it is often known as a fruit sugar it is found in the ripe fruits and the honey on other hand we have the disaccharides as the name suggests di that is it is made up of the two carbohydrate chains the number one disaccharide is sucrose which is made up of one molecule of glucose and one molecule of fructose and it is found in sugar canes and sugar beet another category of a disaccharide is maltose it is made up of two units of glucose and it is found in sprouted cereals another category of a disaccharide is lactose which is composed of glucose plus galactose and lactose is often known as a milk sugar milk is a main source of a lactose sugar now let us move on to the carbohydrate type that is the starches starches i have there are two categories starch and cellulose starch is a form of the carbohydrate which is a storage form of the carbohydrate we found the starch in the food items like cereals rice potato etc and cellulose is a fibrous substance which is not digested by the body but it serves as a roughage which help us in the bowel movements and it help us in the excretion process it is often found in the cell walls of fruits vegetables and cereals now let us discuss a few facts related to carbohydrate during digestion carbohydrates basically starch and sugars are being absorbed as glucose excess glucose is being converted into glycogen and which is being stored in the liver for the subsequent use a normal person needs 400 to 500 grams of a carbohydrate in his diet daily what are the functions of a carbohydrate why we need carbohydrates in our diet Glucose is the only source of energy to our central nervous system that is CNS. Excess carbohydrates and being converted into the glycogen and which serve as a reserve of energy in our body. Lactose sugar promote growth of intestinal bacteria that facilitate absorption of calcium in our body. Cellulose provide fecal bulk and helps in the bowel movement. Now move to the second category of nutrients that is a fats. Fats are the members of lipids. They are also made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Here, learner point is to be noted that carbohydrate uh, fats contain more carbon and hydrogen and less oxygen. They are the richest source of energy in our diet. They are not soluble in water, but they are soluble in solvents like acetone and benzene chemically fats are triglycerides it is to be noted that 1 gram of a fat on complete biological oxidation give us 9 kilocalories of energy there are two major sources of fat in our diet we can get the fat from the animal sources and from the plant sources In animal sources, we have ghee, butter, fish, oil, meat, egg, etc. 
from the plant sources we have the vegetable oils from the seeds of the musk chuck sunflower safflower etc coming to the functions of the fat as we have discussed the fats are the richest source of a energy they form the structural components of cytoplasm and cell membrane they help us in the absorption of vitamins that is a d e k in our diet they act as a precursor of various hormones and they can be stored for the subsequent use by the body subcutaneous fat they act as a insulator to our body they protect our body from cold weather and pressure fats also provide the packing to our vital organs and protect our vital organs from different kind of shocks they provide us uh, they help us in the synthesis of vitamin d and steroid hormones in our body not till here we have seen the major role of the two nutrients that is carbohydrate and fats let us now move to the proteins proteins are extremely large molecules of amino acids they are complex organic compounds which are rich in carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen and sometimes phosphorus and sulfur etc why we need proteins in our diet they are needed for growth and development for repair and maintenance for synthesis of antibodies enzymes and hormones they also be uh, sometimes they can also be used as a source of energy for our body 1 g of a protein give us 4 kilo calories of energy the basic building block of which proteins are made they are made up of amino acid there are only 22 different amino acids which are found in the proteins of the living organisms these amino acids have been divided into two categories that is essential amino acids and non essential amino acids essential amino acids are the amino acids which cannot be synthesized in the body and they have to be provided through the diet on other hand we have non essential amino acids which are, uh, which can be synthesized in the body and from the carbohydrates and they need not to be supplied in by the diet example of a essential amino acid is leucine and non essential amino acid is alanine digestion of the protein protein is not easily or simply absorbed into our tissues it undergoes certain processes so digestion of the protein take place when they are completely converted into amino acids sources of protein there are basically two sources of proteins in our diet we can get the protein from animal sources and the plant sources animal sources include milk meat egg poultry etc and the plant sources can be whole cereal grains a uh, whole cereal grains pulses legumes nuts etc protein the structural component of a body keratin it is found in hairs and nails collagen it is being found in the connective tissues actin and myosin they are present in the muscles now let us look at the functions of a protein The major function of the protein is in building and maintenance of body tissues. They are found in all enzymes like trypsin, pepsin, and renin. They also functions as the hormones and regulate the body functioning. As such as insulin is in a protein which regulates the blood glucose level in our body. They also act as the antibodies and protect our body from various infections. transport proteins perform the work of carrying the important substances from the blood to the tissues in the body now another category of the nutrient is vitamins vitamins though they are required in a small quantity in our body but they play the important role in protecting our body from the different kinds of infections and the disease these are the chemical substances which are required by the body in a small amount they do not provide us energy but they act as a biocatalyst they are essential for keeping our health in the good condition they are also required for the utilization of other nutrients from our diet thank you learners